I'll set, I'll set up the paper, do the easy part, and then uh, we'll have Arturo uh, do the hard part, presenting the result. Um, so our, uh, our paper really is to focus on uh, citizen trust in the elections using survey data. Um, virtually all elections, except ones that end up with a second round, produce winners and losers, but the second round eventually does produce a winner and a loser. Um, and we have a baseline model. Chris Anderson's work about you know, winners and losers and, the, and that edited volume, that, that multi-authored volume, um, and that losers um, have less trust in the elections than, than do the winners. But our effort is to go a little deeper into that and to focus on a set of countries other than the European countries, namely Latin America, which is where we work, and to see whether or not we can, we can add something to that, to that literature. Um, and so uh, what, we, uh, what we look at in the Latin American area is that certainly elections have improved a lot since the, the old days, since the dictatorial days, uh, and yet flawed elections have become uh, fairly common, the most recent of which is the Venezuelan election after the death of Chavez, but we keep on adding a series of elections that are of questionable uh, uh, utility or validity, rather, and others that are particularly impressive in terms of being fair and, and, and clean. Um, and there's a sense that, and we don't have enough data really to demonstrate this uh, effectively, is that distrust in elections uh, in Latin America is, is, is higher than in other world regions. Um, and what we do see is a lot of variation within Latin America, and that gives us some purchase to do some analysis, because if, if the systems were all about the same, we wouldn't have much to talk about. Um, and so what we want to do is find out how much comes from individual level and what, what goes on at the individual level, and what are the systemic factors, and those are the ones I think that become the most interesting in the analysis. The data come from the America's barometer. We began fairly small and, uh, a number of years ago, but systematically, when AID came in and started helping us in 2004, the data set that we'll be referring to is the 2004, 6, 8, 10, and 12, but we've been focusing on really on the 2006 and 2012 data. Um, in the 2012 data set, the primary focus, we have uh, 41,000 Cases in 26 countries, we cover everything. Cuba is still our big uh, gap. Um, so is Greenland. There's a problem we can't dis distinguish between the people and the ice up there, and it's a difficult sample design. But um, but otherwise, we in French Guyana are not independent, so we don't include we don't include that. Um, to give you an idea of the magnitude of it, the uh, ANES, uh, which is the gold standard, if between 1948 and the and the present has interviewed 49,000 people in one country, and that's the kind of problem we have dealing with a, a sample of 178,000 people in 26 countries, so it's a much bigger database. Uh, those are the samples, just for your information, uh, 1,500 people per country, although there are countries like Bolivia where we do more, uh, 3,000, and Haiti post-earthquake where we do more for specific reasons, but basically it's 1,500, and the sample is all set up, so we weight this to 1,500 for all countries so that we don't exaggerate the importance of any country. That's the dependent variable, okay? Um, to what extent do you trust elections? We use graphs for all these, that is we hand responded to cards, they have this ladder, the stairway between not at all and, and a lot. That's basically what we're trying to focus on. Um, the basic, you know, uh, findings in terms of what these scores are, converting them to zero to 100, is a real heavy range. Between Haiti at the very bottom, the red line shows you the, the 50 divide point, that is all of those below 50 are negative, so once you get uh, below Ecuador, um, everything is on the negative end, and then you go very, very high to the stellar case of Uruguay and Suriname being particularly high. Okay. We work with four central hypotheses, um, and that's where I'll end my, present, my, my section, and Arturo will take over. Um, the standard hypothesis, the candidates who uh, vote for the, 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 the citizens who vote for the winning uh, party or candidate have higher levels of trust than, than, than those who vote for the loser. Um, and the gap between winners and losers is somehow rather conditioned by a con context effect, which in Europe was Eastern Europe versus Western Europe, namely more democratic countries have citizens who have a lower gap between the losers and the winners and the losers. Where we add and where we think we get some purchase in terms of moving the theory is on hypotheses three and four. One, because of this one you'll find out because of the minimal findings here is actually pretty important. That is the proximity to elections. Um, you know, do, 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 does time heal wounds, okay? Do it's over a period of time after a week or two after elections, do you forget it all and you just are one happy family again? So we test that hypothesis or is the, or is the effect longer lasting? Um, and then the question of alteration in power. Since we have a whole range of regimes now in Latin America that change the constitutions as each new 
uh, electoral epoch uh, appears for an extended set of, of administrations, Chavez and Venezuela being the, the most extreme case, but we're moving in at the same direction in a number of other cases in Ecuador and Bolivia and Nicaragua and so on, whether or not lack of alternation in power makes a difference. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll turn over the hard part to Arturo, who will give you the, the answers to the, to the questions. Well, thank you for coming. I will present first the descriptive results for, for this uh, paper. Well, uh, they actually show that winners actually uh, present higher levels of trust than losers on average, on both weights, 2006 or 2012. So we just confirmed this baseline model, model uh, originally developed by Anderson. Uh, now, uh, I will present that this gap is actually present in every country, with a few exceptions, like pa Peru and Paraguay, where the gap is uh, not different from zero. But in every other country, uh, we can observe that this gap is present, and that this gap is, is great, like in Nicaragua and Venezuela. Okay, moreover, this gap uh, that the winners have higher levels of trust, uh, hold even controlling for uh, some political and socioeconomic variables in both ways, again. So we are pretty confident that this baseline model is correct. Now we are present these results for how this uh, gap varies between contextual levels, specifically uh, between different levels of freedom house. We observe that in fact, we hypothesize that this gap varies depending on the level of democracy, and we find some support in these descriptive results. Uh, free, free countries, according to Freedom House, present a smaller gap between winners and losers in, the, in their levels of trust in elections than party-free countries in both waves, 2006 and uh, 2012. Uh, this gap uh, hold even controlling for, for standards uh, variables, you can see that the Freedom House index is uh, positive, but the in cross-level interaction between uh, Freedom House and vote for the winner is negative. So it means that when uh, a country presents a higher level of uh, Freedom House or so Freedom House index, the gap between winners and losers is smaller. So what about uh, uh, time. Uh, we hypothesize that the gap between winners and losers in trusting elections is larger when elections are more proximate than when elections are more distant. And we find some evidence of that. But the difference is not so high, it's not dramatic. We also hypothesize uh, uh, that the gap between winners and losers is larger in countries with no alternation than in countries with, with alternation, as these descriptive result, results support this expectation. As you can see, uh, countries with alternation present a very, very small gap, while countries in which they have no alternation present this higher, higher gap. These results uh, hold even controlling for again for this variable you can see that the freedom house is positive that the uh, interaction between freedom house and votes for the winner is negative that the interaction between uh, freedom house sorry between alternation and votes for the winner is also negative so now i will present the results for the fitted models so you can see that in this case, when countries uh, present higher levels of freedom house, the uh, gap between winners and losers is small. But more interestingly, this story is about winners and losers. When uh, countries are less democratic, both winners and losers change. And uh, we observe more polarization in their levels of trust in elections. This is not the case when alternation. In alternation, we, we observe that when there is more alternation, the gap is smaller. But this is a history about a story about uh, just winners. Losers don't change, but winners, when in countries with no alternation, they seem to have this triumphalism. They seem to have this overconfidence in their levels of trust in elections. 
Finally, uh, the gap between winners and losers by, by time, as I said in the descriptive results, that, that change is not so, so dramatic. But this is positive because, uh, as Mitch mentioned, uh, times normally wound, uh, heals wounds. But in this case, we are more or less pretty confident that the effects we observe are not ephemeral, that they are consistent as time passes. Uh, so the gap is still there, and then next elections come, and so the gap is still exacerbated. So in conclusion, the baseline model is correct, Anderson was right, but we also find that uh, less democracy means less trust, and means also less, more polarization between winners and losers. That the levels, uh, lower levels of alternation also means less trust, but the, in, uh, about alternation is a story about the winners. The winners are uh, more enthusiastic about their levels of trust in elections. And the time heals wound at less and little, but uh, as elections become more distant, but, but this uh, uh, result is not so dramatic. The result uh, or effect uh, don't disappear as time passes. Okay, thank you very much.